Once we've calculated our unit rise and our unit run, we take those two numbers, the unit rise number we place on the tongue of the framing square, and we put a stair gauge or a stair button right at that exact point. This particular stair button is circular, so we want the outside edge of the circle to be touching three, seven and three eighths. On the other side of the framing square, on the body of the framing square, the bigger part, we then put a button at 10 and 1 8. So now what we have is the runs on one side, the rises on the other side. And we have formed actually a right angle triangle. So it goes up, comes down, and if we were to go straight across, we have the hypotenuse of the right triangle. And those are the right triangles that we're going to cut out of our stair carriage later as we transfer these marks onto the wood. So now that we have the stair buttons fixed to the framing square, we begin our layout at the top end of the 2 by 10 stair carriage. So on the 7 and 3 8 side, I draw a pencil line, and on the 10 and 1 8 side, I draw a pencil line. Now before I move my square, I put the number 1, because that will be the first step that I'm making in the stairs. Now that you have your numbers uh, calculated and you have your stair buttons, fastened to the framing square, then you lay this onto your piece of stair carriage. Your carriage material usually is a 2 by 10 or a 2 by 12, and we start at the top end, and we start our layout. So notice that the lines have already been made so that they can show up clearly. If you're doing this on the job, be sure to use a very sharp pencil. So we go down the rise, go across the run, and in the middle we put the number 1. Then we slide our square over so that the rise number lines up with the run line. Once we have that line lined up, we follow the same procedure. Down the rise, across the run, put the number two. And from our calculations, we knew that we had to do this five times, so we just follow along. Down the rise, across the run, the number three. And we keep going. You'll notice that what we're doing is actually creating right angle triangles. So again, down the rise, across the run, the number four, and then for the last one, uh, down the rise, across the run, the number five, and then at the end. So at the very last one, you'll see that I've gone down the seven and three-eighths inches for my rise, but then I've come back up by inch and a half. And the reason an inch and a half is because inch and a half is the thickness of the tread material that will sit on top of the rise. And so I cut down the very first rise by inch and a half, and then once I put the tread material on top of the rise, or on top of, sorry, on top of the run, then I will have my seven and three eighths inches. So now I have all these little triangles that have been made, and now my next step would be to cut those triangles out, and that would give me my set of stairs. So only two things we have to remember. One is to shorten the bottom, or the very first rise, by the thickness of the tread, and then up at the top, when you go back up to the top, you will see that you're going to be cutting off your wood straight across here, and uh, you'll be attaching a, a hanger board to this. You will actually take your first run, which is 10 and, seven, 10 and 1 8, and you're going to shorten that by the thickness of the riser board. So when you make a set of stairs, you're going to have a riser board that will nail to each one of the unit rises and so that we would take that thickness and we would shorten off the back end. That will give us the very first run of nine and five eighths because we have a half inch riser board and then all the other runs are ten and one eighths. All the other rises are seven and three eighths except the very first one which is five and seven eighths. Seven and three eighths minus one and a half inches. So now we just cut the stringer out or the carriage we would duplicate it or triplicate it depending on how many we need and then we can build our set of stairs.